Okay, now we're going to take a look at some sketching. So to do this, depending on what you already have open in Fusion, go ahead and start by just creating a new design. So here, we're going to go to New Design. And this is where we're going to start to create uh, some a few different types of sketches. So you'll notice uh, right on the, uh, make sure you're in the Model Workspace, and then go to Sketch. And then in the drop-down, you'll see the first item is Create Sketch. So as soon as I select create sketch, it's going to prompt me for a plane. And in this case, I've only got, I've got nothing else in the model. So I'm going to be prompted with one of the three default planes. So if you think about this in 3D space, you're basically talking about, say, a front view, a top view, and a right view. I'm going to go ahead and select the front plane. Now you're also able to create sketches on um, different geometry once we have uh, model faces or construction planes, but we'll cover more of that later. So for now, if I want to orient myself, I can go over here to the navigation cube and press uh, front. You can also zoom in and out by scrolling my uh, mouse wheel. So if I zoom out, I can kind of get a sense of where we are based on the grid. Now I'm going to go ahead and create some geometry. The first thing I'm going to do is, again, when we come into the sketch menu in the drop down, you see that we have all these different entity types. So rectangles, circles, polygons, ellipse. Let's go ahead and start by creating a circle. You also notice that when I select circle, there's a few different ways. So I can create a circle by a center point and a diameter, two points and a line, three arbitrary points, tangent and tangent controls. Uh, a good idea is to go ahead and play with some of these different options just so you become familiar with them. But for now, let's just go ahead and create a circle. So I'm just going to select any point. The first time I click, and now I'm dragging the size, I click again, we'll complete the command and now I've got my uh, circle placed. You can do the same thing with a rectangle, so I'll go ahead and create a rectangle. Again, I'll do a two-point rectangle here. And again, I'm just trying to just create a few different sketches here to show you kind of the way that we just begin to create geometry. A lot of times when you're doing these sketches, you'll find that most of the shapes that you create can really be uh, created by combining these various primitives, whether it's rectangles and circles, um, or lines or other different shapes. So here's another one uh, that's kind of nice, which is a slot. So we'll go center to center. So in this case, um, there's actually a couple of picks that you make. So I'll go over here a little bit more. Again, I click once and then click twice to define the length. And then on then I start dragging out the width and I'll click a third time to complete the slot. So you'll see as I'm creating this, I get these symbols that are being created. So I have a symbol here. What this means is that these two lines are parallel. This means that these two lines, this line and this circle, are tangent. So if I pick on any point here, I can kind of drag this around and it's going to behave based on those constraints. So no matter what I do, these two lines are going to stay parallel to each other and then the tangency is going to be maintained. Well, if I want to add some information like that in myself, I can come into the sketch menu, select constraints, and now I have the ability to apply different constraints. For example, I might want to select this line. I also get a pop-up right here so I can quickly uh, get to different things like, for example, horizontal. So now I've made that horizontal. Now if I drag this around, if I say OK here, I can now drag this point around. And you can see that no matter how I drag this, it's always going to maintain that horizontal relationship. So as you become more familiar with the tool, you realize that this is really how we create the intelligence to drive these sketches. Now, if I want to get rid of it, again, I can just kind of hover my mouse over this uh, constraint, select it, and I'm pressing the delete key. So now that I've deleted that, what I might want to do is come back in and say that it's going to be vertical this time. So again, back in constraints, I can select this line again, and now I'll say that it's vertical. And so you know, obviously we get a little bit different behavior and now this thing is fixed in a vertical position and if I drag it around I get um, that behavior. So the other things that you might want to do besides creating constraints is creating dimensions. So again in here I can go to sketch dimension and I can select a line and this will allow me to place a dimension that's going to control the size. Again I might want to place another one the command stays active once you start doing dimensions. So I can just keep clicking. 
So I click the line to start dimensioning and then I place the dimension by clicking again. And now I'm still in the dimension tool until I press uh, escape or select a different tool to begin to go into. So it's really nice because sometimes when you start placing dimensions, you're going to want to create a whole bunch of them at once. So that's basically the way that it works. And then once you've created these dimensions, you actually can select the dimension. And this is how we, you know, size geometry specifically. So I'm going to say, I want that to be exactly 100 millimeters with a radius of 10 millimeters. So usually what you'll find yourself doing is sketching things in kind of a rough shape and then adding constraints, adding dimensions, and then locking in the sizes sort of after the fact. So let's take a look at uh, something a little bit more freeform. So let's go ahead and use the line tool. So again, with the line tool, you can either select the drop down and get to line, or you'll notice that since this is the command that's right on the, right on the top of the menu, I can just select that right there. Now I'm in the line command. And now I'll go ahead and just sketch something out. So I'm just going to kind of sketch a little bit of a freeform shape here. Notice that as I come down right to horizontal, I get a little uh, indicator showing that it's going to create that horizontal constraint. The same thing will happen here as I go uh, vertical. You'll see the little indicator to let me know that it's going to create something to be perpendicular there. So that's just kind of nice because as I go, these different relationships are going to be created automatically. And also notice that once I clicked on that last point, I get this shaded preview, which lets me know that I've created an enclosed contour, which will be important later when we go to create geometry. But so for now, you can see we've got a horizontal and perpendicular constraint created. And uh, if we want, we can come in, we could add some more. For example, now, you know, if I go back into that constraint command, you select this line and hold down control, shift in Mac, control in Windows, select the two lines, and now I can create a relationship between these two lines. For example, I might want to make those um, perpendicular, so I'll select that. And now that's in force, I get a little visual indicator, and now no matter how I drag this, those two lines are going to be uh, perpendicular to each other. Another thing I could do is maybe with this one and this one, I'll make those two equal. So again now if I add a dimension, come back in here, add a dimension, selecting this line and place it, escape to exit the command. Now if I change this value to be 100, you'll see that both lines change because since they're both set equal to each other, if I change this one, this one will update. So that's pretty interesting. I can also take it kind of one step further and I can actually drop a dimension on here. Say I want to place this dimension. And now I'll double click on this. So I can see this is a nice little heads up. So look when I click on this. I get this heads up saying that this is actually D4, right? If I click on this one, if I click over here, I can see that this is D3. So that's just the name of the vet of the dimension inside the software. And this is just a little bit of a more advanced technique, but uh, if you want, it's, sometimes it's very useful to be able to come in here and say that I don't want this to be 120 millimeters. I want it to be D3 plus 50. So I can just type that right in, and now I get a little indicator, this FX, letting me know that that's a parameter. But so now if I change this to be 75, that's going to go to 125. So these are just the types of relationships that you can add into your sketch. Um, to really create some intelligence and kind of drive the behavior that you want when you're working with Fusion. So now uh, we've created this nice sketch, but the first thing I'm going to have you do is just zoom out. So you can use the zoom extents, or you can use zoom fit, or you can use uh, the zoom tools, or you can again scroll to your middle mouse wheel. Zoom out where you can see everything. Just drag a nice big selection box around the entire set and press your delete key. And we'll go back to having just an empty sketch, and this is where we'll pick up for the next part of the lesson.